about a week after making the video that promoted giving the police full funding and using penalties and fines to address police misconduct, a member of PLN who is a minority got arrested because a bus driver said that the member called him a effing idiot because he drove past her at a bus stop causing her to have to run after the bus. The other passengers on the bus admitted that the bus driver was overreacting by calling the cops or the supervisor, and so it was a surprise that the white male cop decided to arrest the member. A middle-class black woman is facing a misdemeanor charge because a bus driver said that she called him an effing idiot and yelled at him. Before going into whether or not this changes my position about giving the police full funding, it is important to discuss how that made me feel. I have no confidence in the police department who made this arrest and cringe at the sound of police sirens. I used to cringe because I thought a crime was committed, but now I cringe because the police is coming and I don't know if they will do the right thing. This is also a surprising start to the dystopian police force because at some point, the general public could get so fed up that they revolt and attack the police. This could lead to increased tension and hostility between the general public and the police. It shows how the police is part of the problem. I can see civilians getting so fed up with the police's wrongful arrest and abuse of power. I can see them starting to fear police won't do the right thing or lives destroyed by police misconduct. I can see the general public not wanting to call the police, dealing with criminal issues on their own, and this causing pockets of lawless communities across America because everyone will fall silent and not talk when the cops come. I can see the real criminals benefiting from this and having little fear of someone reporting them to the authorities. It will all build up into a resentful public who hates that their tax dollars are supporting a police force that they can neither call on or trust to do their jobs properly. All this will build until the tipping point where the public and police butt heads and it leads to conflict. A conflict that may not be resolved and could lead to further conflict, thereby creating a dystopian police force that fights and resents a dismissive general public that has no confidence in them. The PLN member's arrest was no coincidence. It gives evidence to what I said about defenses being infiltrated and destabilized and underscores the need to act now. This is not the first time that the psychopath network that I research has tried something like this to silence me. The facts are that I recently made videos informing the public that the nation's defenses have been infiltrated and destabilized. I warned of psychopaths being attracted to the police force and military. I argued that defunding the police would make the police desperate for new recruits, thereby making it easier for more psychopaths to be hired. Since law enforcement is a power field, psychopaths will be attracted by the license to arrest and kill. I also started the PND Public Safety Project to help the public become more aware of psychopaths. All this must have felt threatening to the psychopathic network I researched, so the arrest came days later. It is hard to prove that this network exists, but hopefully a dubious misdemeanor charge based on someone saying they were called a effing idiot right after these videos were made helps to show that I could be onto something. I wasn't planning on making many videos on police reform or the infiltration or destabilization of the nation's defenses. I only wanted to sound the alarm and move on. This incident is causing me to enter the conversation about racism in the police force and police reform. 
This isn't the first time that this member has experienced what I call a legal system lynching, and she's worried about what will happen. I call it a legal system lynching because it is dragging a black person through a corrupt legal system and then gathering to hang them using the trial as a noose. The member has little confidence that she will get a fair trial because of what happened to her during the first legal system lynching. Wrongful arrests usually lead to wrongful convictions because of legal system collusion. She has a blog that will talk about the financial, physical, and mental toll a wrongful arrest has on a person and how wrongful convictions could destroy a person's life. This is a middle-class black woman who was driven into poverty by the first legal system lynching fought her way back to the middle class, and is experiencing the same nightmare yet again. Most people may have rolled their eyes about this being her second time in court, but that is exactly why she's making the blog and podcast. She knows that it sounds like a stereotypical black person who keeps getting into trouble and blaming others, but please visit the blog and listen to the podcast because it will explain that there are two sides to a story and that things aren't always what they seem. The PND Public Safety Project is on hold because of this false arrest. No donations had been received and no donations will be accepted right now. If you want to donate to help fight this form of racial profiling and help support police reform, please visit the link to the Legal System Lynching blog. Throughout the See It Coming video that talks about law enforcement, I held the police accountable for misconduct but said that they should be fully funded to avoid hiring incompetent and psychopathic cops. Does this incident change my position? I was angry about the wrongful arrest and now see that the police racism is real. Police racism is real. I never had a reason to fear a white cop before this incident. I now worry that if I call the cops, will I be arrested because of my skin color, even though I may be the victim? So I see where the calls to defund the police come from because no one should have to feel that way. I don't want to support cops like the one that made the false arrest, so I am for defunding. However, I don't want to put the good cops in a situation where they are stuck hiring incompetent and psychopathic cops because that is no good for the public or the police. After coming up with my idea, which I'm about to share with you, I did a quick search to see if there were similar ideas out there. I came across civilian review boards. Quote, a civilian review board is generally charged with the duty of reviewing complaints and making recommendations as to disciplinary action after the police department has completed its own investigation and made a disciplinary recommendation. These systems can provide greater transparency and an additional layer of civilian and greater involvement by the community. When they make recommendations, the department may be more inclined to take action. So weaknesses, these systems sometimes lack the independence that they need to be effective. Um, I didn't do a search to see how effective the civilian review boards have been. My idea is similar, but does it include um, that the board is made up of community members? This could make um, the boards ineffective because the police's family and friends could possibly make up the board. It's not hard to see that, you know, they would have their friends and family, you know, join the board and maybe some people wouldn't even know of the connection. My idea also requires that the agency is granted the ability to impose fines or penalties um, unlike the Civilian Review Board, it seems that the police may have difficulty disciplining themselves without effective external consequences.
I now support partial defunding that decreases overtime with good standing. An independent watchdog agency focused on victim reporting should be made and funded by an initial 20% levy on all police budgets. The goal is that with good standing, the levy will decrease to only 5% within a few years. This means every year that a police station is in good standing, there will be a 5% decrease in the levy. The levy will not go past 20%, but stay there for bad police stations. The watchdog agency will investigate victims' complaints and decide the amount of fines or penalties. So the levy is to fund the agency and is separate from the fines and penalties. The agency can impose fines and penalties if an officer or station is involved in misconduct. Using this incident as an example, the station will be fined for each officer involved and for not catching this mistake before the initial court date. There is a fine for each officer present at the time of arrest because someone should have spoken up or sought clarification on the arrest. The station will be fined for following through with a wrongful arrest. This should make the police want to have a person to review every arrest to see if there was misconduct involved. As history has shown, wrongful arrests usually lead to wrongful convictions. So the caveat is that because of legal system collusion, a fine or penalty shouldn't depend on a conviction. For example, if George Floyd had lived, there would be a fine or penalty over the cop's excessive use of force that could lead to injury or death whether or not there was a conviction. Therefore, the police will become more aware of acting professionally, using adequate force, and avoid racial profiling, among other things. The plan is that over the years, the watchdog agency can build a book of what actions were fined and give this to the police so that they can detect or prevent issues before the agency has to get involved. The move is more towards self-regulation and police holding themselves accountable. The idea is that within three years, most of the police stations will only have a 5% levy and no fines. The watchdog agency will be funded by the 5% levy until it is no longer needed. That is what I would like to see and what I would like to promote. Right now, the money um, from the funding is going towards inner city programs. In most cases, most of the people who are defunding police are sending the money to fund inner city programs. But as far as I know, those receive enough funding, and I really don't see how that helps police become more responsible for their actions. It's addressing the issue of trying to decrease crime rates, but if the issue is police reform, then more direct action is needed. I will probably try to promote this type of police reform while bringing attention to how wrongful arrests and convictions destroy lives without killing the person. The George Floyd case showed that cops who act on racist notions can cause death. This wrongful arrest shows that it can also destroy lives. I want to bring attention to how this can affect minorities who do not live or have ties to the inner city or low-income neighborhoods. It's a bit different from what is going on out there with other organizations' ideas on police reform. It is neither competing nor negating them. It is complimentary because I am attending to a population who can be devastated by police misconduct as much as any low-income person. I will try to do more See It Coming videos that focus on what is happening around the upcoming election because that is still a real issue. I was thinking of moving the PND Public Safety Project to an online training 
course because it is not really safe to have a PLN member out there right now. Um, I will let you know if that is what happens.